Hey guys, welcome to another Bob Ross and the Art of Guitar. In this video, I'm going to be discussing ways that I practice arpeggios. Hey guys, before we get started, I just want to remind you to look in the description below where you'll find links to my musiclessons.com page with courses and lessons that involve learning guitar. They are specific to jazz guitar, but you can apply them to any style. So check those out and let's get started. So there's different ways that we come about approaching arpeggios on the guitar. And for some of you, you went through the process of starting on the root note and finding all of the different ways to play a particular uh, arpeggio. So for example, if you had a C major uh, seven arpeggio, you might play it one octave like this. Or you might play it like that. Or like this. Or like this. Right? And then you could extend that off into two octaves. Now, for me, the, the way that I've usually went about approaching the arpeggios, at least, you know, my initial way was like that too. I would go through and I would start at the root and then go from there. But later on, what I done is I went through and I used the five uh, shapes that I've used to see the fretboard. If you aren't sure what I'm talking about there, there's uh, links in the uh, description below for my music lessons, uh, courses and lessons, and I have some regarding the five uh, shapes. But basically what I would do is go through and find diatonic um, arpeggios. That way I could practice playing through the shapes in one key such as C major and then I go through and play uh, the sevenths, you know, the uh, seventh arpeggios, the C major 7, D minor 7, E minor 7, F major 7, G7, A minor 7, B minor 7 flat 5 would be half diminished and then you're back to C again. <clears throat> so what I would do is go through and play that. Now there's, there's a big uh, for me, there, there was a difference between taking the practice of the arpeggios, the diatonic arpeggios, playing that versus actually creating music with it. And what I found was, and you may have encountered this too, is that when you go through these um, arpeggio shapes, you get locked into a certain way to play an arpeggio. And you start to build some speed, you feel comfortable with it, and then when it comes time to apply it to a, a actual harmonic situation, you may find yourself locking back into a, a pattern or shape that you've worked on. So what I figured that I needed to do for me, and I'm going to throw this out there for you guys too, is to go through these shapes or patterns that you've established and break those apart. And to do that, I'm going to give you an example of just taking a C major 7 arpeggio. So let's say for example I wanted to start making some music with a C major 7 arpeggio uh, and, and I want to just use chord tones as a, as a soloing device or the arpeggio itself. So what I would do is go through and find all the notes that apply to the C major 7 arpeggio which is a C, E, G, and B. So when you do something like that out of time, it gives you a moment to process that and to think about it. Now you could go through and just do one string exercises where you find it like that. Uh, but the way that I initially would go about doing it then is, is set a challenge for myself. And this gets back into this theme that I've talked about before about limited creativity. So what I would do is just take the notes that are part of a C major seven and I would see if I could keep moving and I would turn on a metronome and I would just play quarter notes throughout. So without a metronome clicking right now, I'll just demonstrate uh, regardless and keep it as close to in time as I can keep it in time. So 
So I think that you're getting the idea there of what I'm talking about with this, you know, just finding it all over the fretboard. And what I find is that if I can do that and I spend a few days working on that, usually I can break down some barriers and I don't feel limited to the shapes that I've worked out. It feels like I can go all across the fretboard to get to wherever I need to go to. Now, another way that I've worked on this is by taking a very simple progression, like two chords only, and working on switching in and out between those two chords, working on only playing the chord tones or the arpeggios. And I'm going to give you an example of that and a few thoughts I have on that as well. All right, so what I have going here is an A flat major and a C major. And what I'm going to do first is just play around with the chord tones and I'm not going to try to uh, set a rhythmic limitation on myself. I'm just going to freely play over it and see how these two are related and, and if there's common tones and what separates them out. Here we go. ideas and I'm going to play back and forth between the two and see how I can really work on that to change only what I need to change and what you'll find is that an A flat it becomes a C minor and in C it's C major so it's a minor major relationship there so let's see what I can do So as you can see, just by using the arpeggios and only using seventh arpeggios too, the major sevenths on both of those, there's a lot that you can do with it when you're playing over a tune. And what I suggest, like I've suggested many times before, is to go through tunes and just play the arpeggios or the chord tones and solo through it. I mean, obviously you can keep going and going with that and make tons of motivic ideas to develop over top of the tune. And when you find those small little differences between the arpeggios, now some may be a little bit more drastic in the, in the change, but when you find those common tones and then those notes that separate it out, then you really are creating the sounds of the changes that are going by. So this is the way that I've worked on uh, using arpeggios in order to really solidify what that looks like across the fretboard, as opposed to just taking a scale-based approach across all the chords that are coming at me when I play a tune. All right, guys, I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget to check the description below where you'll find links to my musiclessons.com page that has courses and individual lessons about my approach to a variety of different topics covering guitar and the technical side of it, learning the fretboard. Also, be sure to check out links below to the gear that I use. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.